I've been here almost 12 years now. Yeah, we're, before it was the studio of Sony Hugo, and I used to help Sylvia in about 1986 or 7. Yeah, it was low the studio class, low her Yeah, now her piece is here. It was a little bit different at that time. But, um, so yeah, she called me up and asked if I wanted to take her studio. Started with a two-year lease, and it was 12 years later. So. Wow! And we're basically right here, like on the Fred Hutch campus. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. It's like a space that's grandfathered in here, and has been an art studio for many decades. Yeah, right? like since the 60s, I believe. And it, what I understand is this was originally built as a school. It was going to be an art school. William Morris and Sonia. Um, took this space over and then it was going to be torn down, it wasn't going to be torn down, and it was and it wasn't. So it's been in the twilight zone for many years. Um, Russ has been working with me for, I don't know how many years, 20, at least 20. 20 years, and he's been lending his uh, expertise and his uh, sculpting ability to help me interpret my pieces. So these are some little figures that he's been helping me with for years. Yeah, we have a great sort of collaborative uh, And is that pretty typical for glass artists to work with other artists um, to realize what they're trying to do? Well, in my experience, yeah, a lot of glass artists mm -hmm. and sometimes we'll bring in other people who are maybe specifically have a skill in a particular type of thing, mm -hmm. and they'll lend their skills to help you know an artist different different process. So, so Ross does that with me, um, and um, yeah. So depending on the on the kind of pieces I'm making, I'll, I'll work with different uh, glass blowers depending on what I'm working on at the time. So this is where I sit every day, <laughs> for the most part, um, and usually Britt sits over here since we're self-quarantining ourselves. <laughs> um, we're trying to. Uh, continue to work uh, and, and make, you know, make work. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll uh, this is a piece I worked on yesterday, I'm cutting out the stencil of this. This is um, a piece that I've done um, in the past, this, this form, and because it's based on a traditional, it's a soul catcher, and it's exaggerated in its scale, but it's based on a, on a, um, a shaman's amulet. In this case, it just takes on a sculptural form, and it kind of, you know, to me, it relates to like the spirituality of our community. You know, it uh, talks about sort of mysticism and, and um, you know, spiritual healing as well as you know, physical healing. Can you talk a little bit about the theme of your activation? So the, um, so I called the show Artifacts from a Future Dream. And it was basically, you know, these objects are obviously non-traditional, but they're, um, I contend that the longer I work with glass, the more traditional it becomes. Um, you know, in the old days, the, uh, uh, there is a very big distinction between traditional and non-traditional art. Um, and the, you know, the overarching theme that I was thinking around this was actually um, uh, the idea of these amulet forms, mm -hmm. sort of like charms or talisman or healing rituals. I mean, that was really what started. Started sort of impression. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I felt like it was, um, you know, one of those kind of urgent themes, you know, especially what's going on in the world and the need for, you know, uh, I don't know, deep reflection and unity and, and focus and all of the above. So these, these amulet forms are, are types of objects that we would wear. Mm -hmm. This bear claw that I have, and this is something that was given to me by Joe David, and so it's like pretty special for me because he's my mentor, and mm -hmm. so um, I, uh, I, uh, you know, I wear it all the time. Yeah. Um, and so the more 
you know, the, the Maori believe the more that you have these these charms, these animals, they're, their green stone, their kunamu is like, you know, is, uh, is a healing stone. Hmm. And it's a protection stone. So it, it protects you from, you know, the bad spirits. And uh, so in the same way, these, these amulets um, do that for us in, in, our, in our way. And um, so the... Um, but in the Maori believe that it collects your mana, which is your life force, you know, and your life spirit. And it, the more you wear it, the more it it, it, uh, it grows in its you know in its significance. And so, if you were to pass it, if you were to give it to somebody, that's a that's a very significant thing. Yeah. Well. So some pieces of the show are reflective of those uh, animal forms, and some of them are uh, based on utilitarian kinds of forms that are traditional, um, like the bowls and the rattles and such, and that type of thing. Yeah. Um, well, maybe this is a good time to go upstairs and take a look at some of the work for the show. Yep. So, Preston, this is your office space, but we're using it kind of as a preview space to look at work from the show. Mm -hmm. um, so these are a few of the objects that will be included in your show that opens mm -hmm. um, next month at the gallery. Yeah, so we got a lot of ravens here. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, the uh, lighter pastels and, you know, different colors that I really like working with, you know, the, the uh, in a way jade they, greens and... Yeah, in a way they feel um, more contemporary because of their use of color. Mm -hmm. they... Yeah, they're definitely not uh, traditional. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, I... I uh, and it's the same way with the basket forms. Like in early uh, on, I kind of insisted that they be like uh, more earth tone, so they mm -hmm. look like baskets, you know. And I was trying to make everything look like, you know, the object, you know, what it would be traditionally. And then I thought, you know, why am I limiting myself to just, you know, the earth tone colors? So I started working with these bright blues and, you know, and different colors. With these pieces that have the, the sort of amulet form that goes through them, mm -hmm. is that a traditional thing or is that um, something that you're just experimenting with? No, it was again, it was sort of um, a play on modernism to some mm. degree. Um, you know, like these forms that were, you know, kind of uh, running through, uh, you know, another primary form. And so I was just, uh, you know, like I say, I get inspired by a lot of like a Hans Arp or something like that. Sometimes I like to, and I've said this many, many times, I like to turn the tables on the modernist, you know, sort of take, you know, inspiration from them as they were taking inspiration from, you know, other mm -hmm. um, African, Native American cultures, you know, and, sure. um, and honestly, they're, you know, it's interesting because a lot of the modernists were saying, you know, that the, what I'd read in an essay was they felt like the, you know, their work had been disempowered from you know creating for the commercial market, and then they were trying to unlearn the trappings in you know, the Western world that they that they were you know schooled artists and you know and mm -hmm. then they were like well trying to find something new they were looking at um, you know these uh, so-called primitive people or you know some people trying to be more um, uh, politically correct to say non-technological societies. <laughs> so, um, but a lot of that work that, you know, comes from our culture, you know, was made to sort of explain the world around us and man's connection to the cosmos and what have you. So, um, and um, yeah, for spiritual need purposes and, and, and uh, um, yeah connectivity so yeah um definitely as i hear you talk about that it, it seems so the stories of um these native cultures seem so relevant right now particularly mm -hmm. given the circumstances that we're living in um with mm -hmm. the spread of this virus and um and people feeling very distant mm -hmm. um is there anything what do you hope people kind of take away from this exhibition or your work and how do you think it relates to this moment in time? 
Well, I mean, I, I think, you know, um, just, you know, raising the awareness of, of uh, Native art and that can, you know, uh, be a contemporary expression mm -hmm. um, and it can still be very relevant. I mean, one of the, one of the um, takeaways from, I was discussing this with somebody the, the other day and they were talking about with the, uh, all of a sudden with the stopping of, uh, you know, air travel and people aren't driving as much, the air quality is getting better, mm -hmm. you know? And so we're, you know, we're, I mean, I, I'm really wondering like, so does that mean that, you know, tackling issues like global warming are, you know, are really could, could be in our control? I mean, who knows? Yeah, sure. But yeah. I also wonder like as, the world slows down so much. Um, like, does that help create space for people to kind of think and remember some of those stories and yeah. and, and reconnect um, to these important things? You know, the the objects that our cultures have created through centuries and that carry meaning with them. And yeah, I think so. I mean, I mean, for me, this is this is what I do. I mean, I I, I try to relate it to um, um, you know have a strong foundation in the basics, you know, the graphic style. Um, and, you know, I'm analyzing stories that I'm sort of synthesizing, you know, for a new audience, you mm -hmm. know, people that um, don't particularly understand the culture, but the more you understand about anything, I think the more fascinating it can be. So, I mean, hopefully, uh, I mean, I see myself as an ambassador of, you know, glass to the you know indigenous community I see myself as you know uh, a, a keeper of culture for the non-indigenous community mm -hmm. I mean once you become keeper of cultural knowledge it becomes somewhat of a responsibility yeah, absolutely and that's how I kind of treat it and you know and I keep trying to push the work into new um, areas and trying to develop and you know find inspiration um, but yeah, I think you know the whole idea. It's interesting that the, the, my initial thought was you know, um, you know, healing amulets. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's definitely was somehow uh, very timely, I guess, for what we're, what we're what's happening to us globally. Preston, thank you so much for letting us visit the studio with you mm -hmm. and um, giving us our opportunity to share your space with our clients and friends and Absolutely. give people something, uh, a little bit of relief in these times and have some beauty in their lives. Yes. And we appreciate it.